Hey guys, welcome back to Reed and Robin's Reed Solos, and today we are actually playing the full Stanley Parable. So, so I haven't been recording in the past couple of days, and that is freaking cool. <laughs> Can you ever see the FPS? Okay, yeah. let's begin. Never the end is never the end is never the end. Wait, no. Never the end is never the end is loading. Never. Ah. There's one thing I hate about this game when recording. It takes so goddamn long to load. And it's hot, so we're taking my jump off. So yeah, um. According to Robbins, his computer has been sent off. It's being fixed. Christmas is getting 370 quid, might, which is just lucky shit. Um, yeah. Okay. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons. <laughs> Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. <laughs> and although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Stanley was happy. <laughs> Oh, and then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. <laughs> no one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay. So, I think he's coming on the weekend. No does. Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. <laughs> or did it advance the story in any way? Why is it so bright outside? It's amazing. So, I know there's lots of endings to this, and we're going to try and do them all. Not in this one but we will attempt to do every ending possible but and you could do opposite to what he says I hear so this one we're just going to do as he tells us when Stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left and just exit <laughs> I swear we've already seen that picture. Oh, look how fast he moves. He's just like, I've got skills. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve the with a care worker. Oh, okay. Oh. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Huh. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Can't believe how bright it is outside. Wow, this this is nice. This is fancy. Nice chairs. Oh, 
Stepping into his manager's office, nice. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. It was right. By simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to enter the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. I don't want to go down. Let's go up instead. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so far so good. It's good. Better than the demonstration. Because <laughs> this time I have options. <laughs> Yeah. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. But I want to go that way. I mean, look at this. It looks so... Uh, I'll do that next time. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Probably not. There's, I reckon it's mind control. I don't know why, I just think it is, okay? It just seems, it's it's because it's so unobvious, it just looks like it is. Now the monitors jump to life. They're <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Fire. The of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers, the lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a See if we can find my office. Stanley, no. one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Where are you going? Oh, this one. Where's my office? That my office? That my office? That my office? That's my office. Stop. Why not? What was I? 427. There I am, employee 427. Yay, I see, I see myself. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Call me, Has Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? Yes. That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yes. No. He refused to believe it. Yes, I refused. It. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was no. it even possible? Yes. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Yes. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Oh, I was expecting to say five. Like in the demonstration where it said eight, eight, eight. <gasps> the lights. What have I done? What have I done? Hello. I'm 
dead on us. Threats and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had right. defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. I went. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? Look, so turned off. Blatantly not England. Perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Did he? Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. The music is so depressing. He's a very happy guy. So, that it. Beat the game. I think that's it. I'm not sure. We'll wait for this to load. Hmm. Yep, that's it. So that's the first main ending. Well, that's the main ending, I think. So, uh, yeah. Come back when you want more, guys. There will be more of the Stanley Parable. We'll get every achievement and everything possible. So, hopefully next week there will be a podcast number three. Hopefully, I hate Wendy's. Me take up. So guys, see you in the next one. Bye.